And a welcome to the What is Truth radio program and podcast show filmed uh, live right here, live to tape at uh, 271 Bucyrus. Uh, our panel here, Dr. Michael Caesar in uh, and the host chair, but I've got my partner in truth for many, many years, uh, John D. Giuseppe and uh, Mark Sassi, our street preaching evangelist, a Bible researcher. Uh, we got him right in the middle there because we're like the training wheels following along. There you go. And oh, you've got a so. you've got a really good topic that you came up with this week that I think you actually heard Mark from uh, the lips of Jesus Christ Himself. It's something He said. Yes, and something you recently taught from Matthew chapter twenty six. There we go. Well, so, talk. Let's talk about it. So it's it's uh, called watch and pray. Yeah. And why is that? Because uh, everybody's. Mostly, most people are familiar with the fact that before Jesus went to Calvary, he went to Gethsemane, to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he took three of his closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, he took with him. And he walked a distance from them, and he gave them instructions, and he told them to watch and to pray. Yeah. And um, why did he do that? Well, he went, he went to pray. He knew that there was this really dark time coming. And how many times have you heard about that we're in the last days and you see all the things happening with current events and you see the news stories day after day and it just seems like, especially in the last couple of years, that things are just multiplying and, and getting darker and darker. And when you think about that, there's a question that comes up and the question is, what ought we to do? Yeah. And in a dark time when Jesus was praying in Gethsemane, he told his closest disciples to watch and pray. Now, just to confirm whether or not if we're in the last days, you find some about that in the Bible in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Yeah. It starts out in the first verse. It says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Okay, so what are signs of the last days? And John's got a paper in front of him about what is it, 30 characteristics of mankind in the last days? There you go. So, what perilous are, times. What are some Here's. of these characteristics to see if it kind of fits with what we're going to Well, this through. goes in, if you go into, as you said, Mark, verse 2, and you can read it off here. Yeah. Um, verse 2, and things that thou heard from many, um, I'm sorry, um, from men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Yeah. Amen. It's a, and, and, and it's uh it's and we we see that today. We do and see we that talk, today. We talked about that. I mean, you brought this up a couple of weeks ago and and you know, again, you we could you could go and, and you could talk for a good twenty minutes on each one of these yes. and overlap it. But um, you know, I find it interesting, Mark, but today's is, is watch and pray. Yes. And you reference Matthew 26 when Jesus went into the garden and he came back and he went a little further and pray. And, and, um, and he says, uh, and the, the, the apostles were sleeping. They fell asleep. <laughs> fell asleep. Well, before you get to that, <laughs> okay. maybe not everybody's familiar with the story. You might want to read from verse oh, 36. Oh, yeah, let's tell them from the 36, story. Okay. Sure. So then come the Jesus. Yep. Okay, then come at Jesus unto a place called Gethsemane. And said it unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And when he went a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Go, my father, if it be possible, let this cuss pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And saith unto Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so. so it is true that the signs, these characteristics that you read from 2 Timothy chapter 3, those kind of things, disobedient to parents and unthankful, unholy, all those different things, we see that in our day. And more so than our parents' generation or our grandparents' generation. I mean, things have changed and, and things have gotten darker. Mm -hmm. And so the, the real question is, what are we to do? And it's found right in that same chapter in Timothy, in verse 14. It says, uh, verse 14 of 2 Timothy 3, here's the answer that the Bible says are, as to what we are to do. It says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. 
and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. That's speaking of the scriptures. Next verse. Uh, Look at verse 15. 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, right? Amen. which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And you were talking about the last days, and you were reading out of 2 Timothy chapter 3. Yes. Earlier, in the early epistle that he had given to Timothy in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, he just said, by the way, the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit of God, speaks expressly that in the latter times men shall depart from the faith. And so part of the darkness of these days is I think we all know from the time we were younger. Now, you and I are older, John. Right. Uh, we, we lived in the 60s uh, or early. Mark, you were born, though, in... 67. Okay, so let's 70s, live 70s and 80s. But when I, and I was born 54, let me tell you, in 1958, when I was four years old, and I remember, and my mom dressing me up on Sunday and taking her hand and walking with my mom and dad to the local church, and all over Little Italy, all the families going to church. Everybody went to church. Everybody. I mean, the people were trying to follow the faith in some way or shape or form. Who does that on a Sunday now? Yep. Things have changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, things and, have changed. You know, I, 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 hate, I don't want people to think sometimes that uh, the listener that we've been holy rollers since birth. No, no, we just, no. We just want, we, you know, we happen to be. We I broke to, away as a teenager. We happen to be Catholic. I think you were. Yeah, you, I, I was raised Catholic, Catholic too, yeah, but and, we and see was, a difference in and, the last 20, 30, 40 years. And even when, even when we became teenagers, you know, we, we would go to church as the guys, you yeah. know, and they had the Saturday night mass. So you could, so you could yeah. sleep, so you could go get drunk and sleep in on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, but, but that wasn't, it was, it was almost what we were taught to do. What we did, that, that's the way you be. It was a code of ethics to follow. Certainly not what, like what we know yeah. now. But as a but nation, people, but have as a we nation, drifted? We went, oh, yes. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. studies we, were back in World War II. It was uh, 70% of families went to church on Sundays. Now they say it's less than 15%. You couldn't get gas on Sunday. Yeah. I remember my father. Right. Yeah. Right. I remember him on Saturday night after dinner running out to gas up the car if we were going to go somewhere on that's, Sunday. That's right. Because you couldn't get gas that's on right. Sunday. So times have definitely changed, and we're definitely in darker times. And, you know, 20 years ago when 9-11 happened, everybody ran back to church for a month or two, but then that waned oh. off, yep. and that changed. That, real quickly. And so here we are today, and, you know, when it's times like these, obviously— from verse 14 that we read, the first thing that we are to do is to get back into the Bible or continue thou in the, in the Bible. Oh. Why? Because that, that makes you wise. Amen. And so there's, there's a story in Matthew 25. This is really talking about the kingdom of heaven, which refers to, uh, you know, talking about Israel. But in Matthew chapter 25, verse 1, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Now, that story goes on and on, and a lot of people have different ideas about what that's talking about. But to stay simple with that, the, the wise virgins, they were wise in, in the scriptures. Yes. That they were walking circumspect, sec, circumspectly. Yep. But foolish means that you don't see things coming, and uh, you don't see it. So... Uh, I'm trying to think of the verse. You know, well, in the Proverbs, it talks about the fool refuses instruction. instruction. Yes. And, and instruction is found in the, in the scriptures. It's God's instruction. Because yes. when you're talking about wisdom, Mark, at least from the Bible, all the verses you quoted, they're, they're meaning primarily spiritual wisdom, not yes. earthly wisdom, not um, academic wisdom, but spiritual wisdom from God. And, yes. and that's the point I want to bring up, going back to Matthew 26, when Jesus said, I, when I was a young Christian, I, it was hard for me to grasp this, but now I see. He says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit, the spirit, and you talk about a saved person, is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's yeah. true. And even, and even we're seeing, Mark, as we talked before, those of us, um, we know people that are, that are strong in the faith, but by seeing the physical, on the physical realm, yeah. what they're seeing in the world today is really, really disturbing them. It's shaking them. It's shaking sure. them. Yeah. And, and we could even talk about, not even secular people, good Christian people. And, and they, I hear them all the time. You know, what are we supposed to do? I'm upset. I'm distressed. I'm scared. I, you know, whatever they are, what are we supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to get into the Bible, get close to God. But 
Just like he told his disciples in, an, in a time of darkness, he told them to watch and pray. Amen. And, and I wanted to get to this in Ephesians 5.15. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. There's, a, there's that difference again. Yep. One Re hand and the other. Yes. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Uh, and okay. where can I find the will of the Lord? In, Proverbs. in the Bible. There you go. In the word of God, in the yeah. Holy Scriptures. In the word of the word. <laughs> so if. If that is anything that you've been thinking about as you've been watching the news, reading the paper, talking to your neighbors or coworkers, if you have had fears or, or you know, whatever it may be, whatever's bothering you, troubling you, upsetting you, take it to, take it to the Lord. And, and so if we get back to what John was reading earlier about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he told the disciples to watch and pray, what did they do, John? They fell asleep. They fell asleep. They fell asleep. Because the spirit is willing. I think, I think just discussing this, it's coming into, there's two types of people that we might be talking to out there. I mean, you, know, you have the saved Christian that's disturbed by this. And what they need to do, as you said, Mark, get back into the word. Get back into the word. Yes. Your flesh is afraid, but your spirit, the spirit is willing. Get back into the word. For those of you out there that don't know the Lord, I mean, it's kind of a lonely place. And you need to know the Lord. Because your spirit and your, 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 your body, your physical realm is disturbed. Because, and because this, this is some evil stuff that's coming down right now. Yes. This is supernatural. These things we're talking about with the Bible saying, this is Jesus, Paul did this 2,000 years ago. Man's been like this forever. Yeah, he has been. But he's saying in the end times, we're seeing it all over. Man was never rich enough to be high-minded and 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 have the and have the things that 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 paul is telling timothy that, that they're going to see in the last days yeah right so you know this is a nation man so, they were farmers they you know they, they didn't they didn't have they didn't have this those ways to sin and and well, so i think i think physically people are afraid and if you don't if you're afraid in your soul you need to you need to come to the lord because he will give you peace absolutely those of you that are saved but this is disturbing. Understand this. Watch. Jesus said in the end times, these things happen. You're actually seeing the end times unfold in front of you. Amen. And you need to change your way of thinking because it, it can be disturbing. It is disturbing. But guess what? You are part of it. You are seeing. Perversion. You are seeing what many, many prophets, Jesus said. Many prophets wanted to see these things. Many prophets wanted to hear these things. You're hearing and seeing them now. If you'll know this, if you get your nose in the book. Yes. And, and so let's get back in the book yes, because the show sure. is called mm -hmm. What is Truth, Amen. right? And the truth here in, uh, I'm going, I'm in Luke chapter 21, yep. Jesus is speaking and he says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged, this is verse 34, be overcharged with surfe surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. How many people are wrapped up in cares of this life? Mm -hmm. And so that day come upon you unawares. What day is he talking about? The return of the Lord. It's That's been right. 2,000 years. Jesus said, I'm coming again. Okay, we're supposed to be watching for him. Surfeiting is an old uh, uh, word uh, for, for overeating. There you go. You know. Uh, None of that going on and, in America uh, Overeating and, and drunkenness <laughs> and the yeah. cares of this Lutness. life. Yeah. But, but the, the chapter you're talking about, Mark, and it's a great chapter, uh, and again, take heed, lest at any time your hearts and, and your hearts be uh, overcharged and, and even troubled. Yes. And that's one of the problems that's happening is, as he said earlier, men's hearts are failing them for fear. Yes. And they're looking at these things which are coming on the earth and they're looking at things being shaken up and they see this stuff. And it, the, the 21st chapter is about right near the end. He was letting his disciples know what it would be like near the end time, right before he comes back. Isn't that interesting yeah. that the Lord tells us things before? Yeah. Amen. And gives us the Amen. comfort that we can know what we ought to do. Yeah. Right? He Instead can see of, the end from the beginning, and, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, He's and, from everlasting to everlasting. And we've gotten, we've been off, we've been off the mics. And we've talked about current events. Yeah. And we get, we get agitated. Yes. It, we're only human. We're only flesh. But that's why it's so important to get back into prayer, to get back into the Word of God, because these will give you peace. Because even though what I just said, you're watching, uh, it applies to myself, uh, you know, you're watching end times unfold, you know, maybe 
maybe uh, you should be thankful. I mean, uh, many people wanted to see these things. Sure. We are very close. We feel we are very close to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without and a doubt. Amen. How many, how many generations wanted to see that? We very well might be part of that generation. However, however, boy, oh boy, if you, you know, as, as much as we read scripture or something like that, you watch 20 minutes of, of, of uh, Fox or any of those any news channels, news and you, channel. get, you get yourself agitated. We're proud Americans. By, by the way, you hit on something. You said that if, if, if we feel that we're close to the end, right? And I've noticed that on YouTube, if there's any videos where somebody mentions something about, are we at the end, right? Is the Lord coming right back soon? Man, that gets a lot of hits on the internet because people are wondering. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to know some teaching from the Bible about that, go into Pastor Caesar's YouTube channel. Go to Matthew chapter 24, 25, 26, and... Go through the teachings of it and see what the scriptures have to say about that. Spend some time. And, and so here we are back in, in Luke chapter 21, right? And he says, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Whoa. Yeah, that means that the Lord coming back, it's, it's going to be, it's going to catch a lot of people it's unaware. World, it's a worldwide event, too. It's worldwide, a worldwide, worldwide event. It's, it's, and I keep his on. world, he wants to bring it back. He wants everyone to see it. And, yeah. and the next verse, he says, watch ye therefore and pray. This is Luke's gospel, but we started out in Matthew's gospel. That's right. Same, same warning. And he says, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So... He, he wants us to watch. And, and the first time that he told his disciples to watch, he came back, and in verse 40 he says, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Now, he didn't rebuke them. He was graceful with them. Yeah, yeah. And he knows that we fall, and I fall. And so... And we're you, weak. Yeah, we are weak, and the flesh is weak. But God wants us to watch for his return. The Lord wants us to watch for his return. But he also wants us to watch out for the devices of the devil. He says, um, how does he say it? There's, there's a verse I was thinking of earlier today. Which one, brother? Um, well, we are to watch in all things, Yep. Timothy tells us. We should be reading the Bible, listening to preaching, uh, let the Lord teach you his wisdom through his word. He says, he who has an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. But some of the things that we're supposed to watch, uh, I guess it says it here in 1 Peter 5.8. He says, be sober, be vigilant, you because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we're supposed to be watching for the Lord's return. And like John and I right. were talking, that could be very soon. And if you want to study it, go back into Matthew and, and study it. But not only watching for the Lord's return, but watching out for the devil's devices. And if there was, you know, some teenagers standing behind us right now, and I said, hey, guys, you got your devices on you? What would they pull out of their pocket? <laughs> they would pull out of their pocket their cell phones, yeah. right? Yeah. And it seems like almost everybody in the world, I, I've heard that every single citizen in China right now has a cell phone. Oh, my gosh. By government order. I and, know a few Americans that don't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. with those devices, uh, I just want to let you know while we're here for a second on that thought. Um, Second Corinthians. Chapter 2, verse 11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant, ignorant of, of his, his devices. devices. Yep. Interesting that word devices, right? And it's also interesting that you want to use a King James Bible to research words like this because the King James Bible hasn't been changed. Amen. If you have another Bible that's a modern yeah. Bible, NIV or a Catholic Bible, where the words have been changed over time, different editions and so forth, you're not going to find these connections. You're not going to be able to study out these words. But listen to this in the prophet Daniel. Daniel chapter 11 is talking about the Antichrist. And I can tell you, I've noticed in the last 5, 10 years, people want to know about the Antichrist. They mm -hmm. want to know when he's going to show up, who he's going to be, what's he going to do. Well, read Daniel chapter 11. Sure. Okay? And in Daniel chapter 11, the scripture says, speaking of the Antichrist, and it says, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even yep. for a time. Verse 24. Yeah. And then the very next verse, verse 25, it says, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Now, without going too deep into that, 
you know, beware of those things. Be watchful in those things. You're not supposed to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Well, and so consider that. And I think it's, I looked, I took out my device. There you go. And I, went to, I went to the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. It's an app that you can get, listener. It's, it's wonderful. And I looked up snare. Why would Jesus use the word, word snare? And I looked it up and it says it's to entangle. It's to bring unexpected evil, perplexity, or danger. Yeah. Like and a trap. Like a trap. Like trap a, a, like a trap. Yeah. And a trap. And, and that, and because many people know, well, you know, they're saying there's a guy out there and, and this and that, but when, I, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll see it when I believe it. Blah, 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 whatever. And then it happens. You're in a snare. Yeah. It's not like um, most people in this world know. Notice there, there's talk of a universal God. And salvation through his son. Well, you Most said people know that. They, 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 they'll believe it when they see it. Right. Is what they're looking for. And then when it but comes we to walk truth. not by sight, but by faith. faith. There you go. And yeah. how do we get faith? You know, by the book. By, by, the, by, word of God, by the word of God. Reading the yes. word of God. And and as you figure a snare is, um, it makes me remind of that song, Mike. It, and I, again, people always want to talk about the pick me in the brush. <laughs> when the Lord comes back, yeah, he's going to be totally surprised. Yeah. Maybe. All right. But most people know and they have considered and you don't say you haven't listener. You have considered in your heart a little bit. And all of a sudden when he comes, you're not going to have time to say, I'm in. Yeah. You don't have it's a snare. The, the virgins it's again, the wise snare. or the foolish. That's the, right. The right. wise one have, were right. prepared, the foolish ones weren't. It's a snare. Look, God sees three people. Read the book of, of Proverbs. He sees three. He sees you as uh, wise, which is how he wants you to see, or he sees you simple or a fool. Fools are scorners, yeah. right? The simple is I live for now. I'm not that smart. I eat, drink, uh, you know, have my fun. Tomorrow I die. The fool is just full of himself. The fool is the educated, the educated professor, if you will. Yep. All right. They're going to have a, they're going to go into a snare. The wise watch like the versions. Yes. They watch and, and, and they and pray they're, and they're ready. And, they're dressed and they're ready. And, and I don't want, sometimes people, they think um, like the Muslims do. What does that mean? I got to drop down seven times a, a day. And pray. No, when you pray, when you read your Bible, you're praying, you're communing. You're communing with your God. Well, think about it this way. When you're reading the Bible, it's God's exact words in a King James Bible. So you're listening to the Lord. Amen. And when you're praying, you're talking to the Lord. That's right. It's, you know, and many times in the prayer, we have our prayer meeting and, and you'll hit your knees and, and you know, you, you, some people pray like Santa Claus. I need this, this and that. Or they like to repeat verses and whatnot. But but when you are reading this and then you put the book down and you think and you say, Lord, really, I, I never saw it this way. You're in conversation. You're in communion. That's praying. That's communing with your God and the spirit. Now, you were, again, before you were talking about the different types of people in the Proverbs. And, of course, the wise are the ones that have uh, attended their ear unto the word of God and mm -hmm. the instruction of God. And, and, and so they, they know the Lord through the process of conversion. The simple can be, and God wants to convert them into yes. the wise. Sure. Yes. That's his that's his desire. Peter, I prayed for you that your faith would not fail. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Peter was still simple. He struggled that night. A few days later, when he got his full faith in the resurrected Jesus Christ and was converted, Peter went out and preached to other simple people to convert Amen. them to the wisdom. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and, and what does the Bible say about conversion? It says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And so that's what the Lord would have you to do. You know, if, if, if like John was saying, you know, reading the Bible is listening to the Lord. Praying is talking to the Lord. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you can do both of those things either in a condition of being lost or saved. The Bible asks the question, are you saved? Yeah. And you, the Bible says to examine yourselves to see whether or not you be in the faith. Yep. And Jesus himself said, ye must be born again. Why? You have a natural physical birth, but you have to have a spiritual birth. And in order to get that spiritual birth, you just simply have to believe the gospel that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and receive Christ. You have to ask him to come in and save you. 
That's that's receiving Christ. And if you don't understand that, the Bible explains it. I get it. You know, we were out. We were all out there one time, Amen. and I heard people say, uh, you know, Jesus died for your sins, and I and I say I don't get that. I mean, well, what do you mean he died for my sins? Well, th there's a lot to it, folks. This is God. This is God's word, and this is God's way. And you know, you show yourself wise to make an attempt to understand that. And he will show himself faithful Amen. if you do that. But, but again, if, if you're sitting out there, it's, it's up to you. Look, he's God and you're not. You got to make an effort. For goodness sakes, Revelation says, Jesus says, I stand at the door and I knock. He's knocking on the door of your heart. And if you open, I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. All right? You got to at least open the door. It could be, not be any easier. I'm wearing a shirt right now. If you go to YouTube, and it says, Jesus saves sinners. And I was considering that. It doesn't say Jesus saves the righteous. It doesn't That's say right. Jesus, saves, Jesus saves, saves people. Jesus saves sinners. Why? Because we're all sinners. Why? Be because John 16, 9. If you don't want to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a sinner. You're going to die in, in your day-to-day -day sins. Does that make sense? So he came to the world to save sinners, but there's none righteous. No, not one. So in God's eyes, we're all sinners, yes. and we need to own up to it, and that's wise. There you go, and that, that's good advice. And in these times that we see that are dark, is there ever been a better time to get saved and get right with God? I mean, just get on your knees and cry out to God. It's as simple as that. Ask him to save you. Um, I'm in Luke chapter 12 now, and Luke chapter 12 is talking also about the Lord coming. And we were talking about watching. Now, what do most people in America watch today? I think they probably watch TV. Yeah, right? Yeah. Movies but, or something, yeah. But that's a different kind of a watch. It's more like viewing. You're just sitting there on a couch, like a couch potato, just viewing yep. a movie. And you're just a spectator, and that's it. But the Lord wants you to watch, and watch is an active, it's an active thing. Uh, here in uh, Luke well, that's, 12. Just quickly, I yeah. mean, that's what a, a, a sentinel or a guard would do when the soldiers were asleep. Okay, you've got the night watch. You watch out for us. And yes. You've got your eyes open and you're looking. So, Well, now that you mention that, I should, I should bring up this point. Um, thinking about a watch, and if you think about it from a military standpoint, right, there was an actual event happened in 2008 in Ramadi, Iraq. Aha. Uh -huh. And there was two young Marines that were put on sentry just minutes before. It was caught on camera. They just changed the guard. And these two, one was a 20-year-old. I, I don't remember their names. You can look it up. It was 2008, Ramadi, Iraq. Uh, one was 20 years old and one was 22 years old. Two young men. Minutes earlier had taken watch. There was 50 Marines sleeping in the barracks. There was another 100 Iraqi either soldiers and or policemen that were there sleeping. So they were guarding 150 men. There was a, a corridor lined with concrete that was about 70 yards long, and they were facing down that with a couple of barricades in it. There was also some Iraqi policemen slash soldiers with AK-47s that were also on guard on the side. But the Marines are the main guards. They were on watch. They're on watch. They're on watch. And watch doesn't mean they were just sitting there viewing. No, they were ready for action. And so attentive, alert, they were circumspect, alert. all those things. Yeah, alert yes. is perfect wording, yeah. right? So what the camera captured was that all of a sudden uh, a truck, are we running it's out okay. of time? Keep, no, finish your story. This so a, a truck came flying around the corner. It had a thousand pounds of explosives, high level explosives in the truck. They didn't know what was in the truck, but this truck is coming at them full speed, bashing through the barricades. On the camera, you can see within the first second to two seconds, those two Marines, they plant their feet, they aim their weapons, and within two seconds, they are firing into the windshield of that truck. The other guys with AK-47 start firing also, the Iraqis. Within the next couple of seconds, the Iraqis run for their lives. They drop their AK-47s and duck and run, not the two Marines. They stay planted, and they continue. Keep exactly. Firing. They just keep firing. The truck blew up. It was a huge explosion. Killed the two Marines, but they stopped the truck, and they saved 150 lives. Amen. That's watch when it comes to the military. And it's not like watching that, TV. That, that's like... Yeah, it's not like watching TV. That would be the equivalent of being a martyr. And stick with us for the second half of this exciting program on What is Truth. Amen.
Amen. Back in the What is Truth on the second half of the show, we just had a great uh, story about about the Marines back in Iraq and how they were watching guard one night, watching over 150 men and the alert, attentive readiness that they exhibited. And you were saying when Jesus was speaking to his disciples to watch and pray, that's what he's looking for us to do to to prepare ourselves, to defend ourselves, to ready ourselves from the evil devices of the enemy who wants to snare us and take us down, and also to prepare ourselves for, I just imagine that night those Marines are waiting and watching and waiting and watching, and instead of the devil coming in that one truck blowing things up, suppose they looked up and they saw the U.S. planes coming down, ready to take them home and say, the war is over. I mean, they're excited for that, and we're waiting for the return of the Lord. Amen. So watching Amen. and praying fits in both ways. I, I just want to, a, a little more on watch. I always consider when watch is, is also, too, is, is the story about the Marines. That's, that's when it's coming at you. Yeah. In but six I think, seconds, by the way. In six seconds. At but the I end think, of six seconds, the explosion happened, the camera flashes out. Right. Wow. But I, I think with the Lord, when you read that, to judge the spirits, try listen, the spirit, try yeah. the spirits, yeah. judge, I want judgment, right? I think, I think also when you watch, you need to consider, you need to watch quietly, you need to understand. I remember growing up in the city and, um, and there were old, old, older Older guys, you know, that when you grow up in a city, you're in little clusters. You know, you're sure. the 15-year-old, sure. you're the 17 And, you know, you don't, you don't hang out with the 20-something-year-olds, but they're around, you, right? Your group. But, yeah, yeah but there, there are some people, and unfortunately this is on a negative side, but they could watch a person. And I would watch them watch these people. And they knew what they were going to do. Before they did it. Before they did it. <laughs> They knew, they knew the it's street. Like it, they knew the street. They brother, knew. it's like being on the road today. Right. I can see a driver, a young driver in front of me go, that guy's going to turn right gonna, in five exactly. minutes. You can tell what they're going to do. You can tell by the, by, the, yeah. by the way they're Exactly, yeah. by the way they're swerving. I mean, these guys would know if they were packing, if they were going to start trouble. Yeah. Um, they, the they, would be, they would even know. <laughs> you know, Roberto Duran said one time, the famous boxer, if he blinks, he blows. <laughs> right. And, you know, sometimes, you know, in the streets, some, there's a lot of big talkers and, and stuff. But a guy, some of these guys who look them right in the eye and know if they're for real or if not. And I think, I think with what we learn from Scripture and what we know how the Lord wants us to behave ourselves uprightly, wisely, he wants us to look and consider. Look and consider. But you really can't consider if you not, have nothing to consider it to. You right. need well, the Lord's on. word. You know, you started this study, I think it was in Matthew 26. Yes, yes. And it was, you know, the midnight hour for Jesus. Uh, the Last Supper's over. The next day, he's going to hang on a cross, and he knows it. He knows mm -hmm. it. This is, this is the midnight hour, and it's very dark uh, for him spiritually, emotionally. I mean, he's not thrilled about having to be whipped and have a crown of thorns put on his head and have to lay his hands out and have nails go through his hands and his feet. And be more and, marred and, than any man. And, and just, and yet, he set the example himself by, after the Last Supper, let's go to the place of prayer in Gethsemane, and I'm going to watch and pray. And he's setting an example. If, if the Lord of glory, if the, the Son of Amen. God watched and prayed, I think we might need to. He's exactly. the strongest one that ever lived. Exactly. Yes. The yes. Bible the Bible talks about Jesus going and praying all night long. Yeah. Talks about him getting up long before the daybreak and going out and praying. Well, let's yeah. talk about the praying now because Amen. he right. had his midnight watch, but he was also praying. Yes. That's right. And, and by the way, just to finish the watch, yeah. when it says watch ye and pray, the next couple of verses say, lest ye enter into temptation. There you go. That's why you're supposed to watch. You're supposed to be alert. Prayer keeps yep. us awake, uh, watching. So anyways, we're supposed to watch for the Lord and watch out for evil. So in praying, I think we ought to take a look at, uh, how about Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. This is a good topic, brother, because I was taught to pray a certain way when I was young, and it seems like Jesus has an entirely different way of praying Yeah, the I mean, way I was taught as a young boy. It's the same for me, same for me. Okay. So when I, I grew up Catholic and, you know, sometimes they would tell me, well, say 10 Our Fathers or and Hail say Marys five or, or something yeah. else, yeah. right? Yeah. 
And here in uh, Matthew chapter 6, you want to read this, John? Verse 9. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Go on. And then, yeah, verse 7. But when you pray... Use not vain repeti- repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Let me pause you for one second. So Jesus says in verse 7, you, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. So it's not about saying 10 our fathers or five of this or five of that. He says not to do that, specifically not to do that. So, you know, the Hindus, they chant and the Buddhists chant and it's just repetitive, repetitive stuff. That's not what the God of the whole universe desires. What he desires is if you go on verses 8, 9, 10, he he tells you how to pray. This is the instructions. Exactly. He wants clarity of your soul. He wants to know what you're thinking, what you're lamenting what your thoughts are so he could so he could heal you yes. well well when i was a little boy uh I, I didn't um have and i did use repetitions but they weren't my words i was repeating they were the ru- words someone else gave to me they were the the empty prayers that someone else like someone handed me a script said here repeat this over and over to the lord there's prayer and, books yeah prayer where books you just like read that. the prayer yeah but but that's not what the lord wants not at all okay yeah. You want to keep going? Yeah. Verse 8, 9. And I'll- after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Oh, this is this frame. So remember what he said. After this manner. After this manner. Yes. Therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now, and, now, if I take those very words there and just write them down and start repeating them over and over, that would be a vain repetition because I'm repeating. Because he said, after this manner, he said, the first thing I want you to understand is the one that's in heaven is not just your father, he's our father. He yes. has a big family. You're one of many. So one of the things you're going to do when you pray is you're not just going to be praying for yourself. You're going to be praying for other people in that family. Another thing you're going to understand is his name is holy. Hallowed be thy name. You want to carry that name with reverence. You want to pray for it with reverence and, and with respect. Thy kingdom come. Uh, right now, God has a kingdom in heaven, but the problem is thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's not being done on earth as it is in heaven. And one of the things you're praying is, Lord, just like Jesus in the garden, Father, I really don't want to go to that cross tomorrow. But if that's your will, then I'm going to do thy will rather than mine own. And and when I'm praying, it's like, you know, I don't particularly like Maybe even sitting in that church where the pastor reads these things out of the Bible that seem to reprove me and correct me. I don't like being reproved and corrected all the time, but thy will be done on earth in Amen. me. I want to begin following right here what you want me to do, that's Lord. Right. Amen. Uh, so that's he's teaching manners of prayer. Yes, yes. And, and so after this manner, as he yeah. boldly states in the, in the beginning, after this manner, he tells you that, that, first of all, like you said, thy will be done. It's all about the Lord's will uh, over and above our will, over and above Jesus, whether or not he wanted to go to the cross. It's thy will be done, Father, right? And then uh, he gives the the manner of to forgive. And so, you know, you can look that over yourself in Matthew chapter 6 and and review that yourself. He also says to lead us not into temptation and to deliver us from evil. And so that's part of the watchfulness. And here you're seeing it in the, in the prayer, right? Uh, Colossians 4.2 says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. That ought to be a big part of your that, prayer That's a great thanksgiving. prayer. You're just mentioning, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I think about this translating, me, Lord, you'd lead me into temptation. He's saying, no, I know that right now you're facing a choice. So what college to go to? And there's two different colleges. 
I know what is the better college for you. If you would just stay close to me in prayer, I will direct you into the college where there will be less temptation and much less evil than there is in the other place. I mean, that's what you get in prayer, helping, letting God help you make the right choices Amen. in life. Amen. And I'm going to get personal here for a second. Every single day when I pray, I ask for the same thing a lot, and it's, uh, it's mentioned in 1 Kings 3.11. Uh, the Lord says to Solomon, after Solomon right. answered a prayer, he says, basically, because thou hast not asked for riches, right? He says, but you ask for understanding to discern judgment. And so I ask the Lord for guidance. I ask the Lord for direction. I ask the Lord to, to lead me and guide my steps, and, and that's I, a great prayer. Amen. But I want to say one other thing because I, I struggled with this too because he did say earlier, uh, use not vain repetitions. And you're, you're saying you do the same thing every day. But there is a difference between a vain repetition that someone else put in your hand like a script and a heartfelt repetition that, yes. Lord, I know this is a weakness I have. I need help with this every day. I'm asking for my daily bread to do this amen. today. Amen. amen, amen. And I think David gives a very good example in Psalm 142, where it's not just, you know, he's not reading out of a prayer book. He's not reading what some grandfather wrote down before him or whatever. It's coming from his heart. And amen. in Psalm 142, verse 1, David says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. That's a word for prayer. I poured out my complaint before him. Yep. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. Verse 5, he says, I cried unto thee, O Lord, and said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. And that... that, that thing that David was going through is almost, and this was maybe a thousand years before Jesus was in Gethsemane, but David was facing dark hours. Yes. And he was having like a Gethsemane moment a thousand years before Christ. Here we are 2,000 years after. Things haven't changed. We still have trials. We still have troubles. We still have dark moments. And we need to do like this is when our spirit is overwhelmed, watch and pray Yes. So that the Lord can strengthen and help us awake out of the slumber that the disciples were in and get up and follow and on. And I think with all reverence that we're made in his image. Yes. And even in, even in uh, Genesis, he said, so, so man wants to be as one of us. Okay. Um, we are all, you know, many of us are fathers. We've had young people, young kids. And we were young kids. But we've had our young kids constantly repeat. Daddy, I want, daddy, I want, daddy, I want, or mom, 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 you know, they're watching TV, mom, 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 you know, it grates on us. And, and why wouldn't it grate on the Lord? The, the same is, it really is that that same old, same old, where is your heart? Yes. Where is your heart? John, how do I know you if you have this prepared uh, prayer, if you will? I want to know who you are. Just like, just like a father communes with his son. It's communication. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and sometimes, you know, bring it to the Lord. David says he's, you know, he's, he's you know, you could be angry. Bring it, bring, it to the, bring it to the Lord. You don't have this understanding. I mean, I think the, the Lord respects you and respects that. He, he's the living God. And yeah. he cares. And, and, and he cares. He careth for your soul. Right. And he's not your homie. So I'm not trying to make it like, oh, No. You go in there with respect, absolutely. Like, like, uh, like, like you did. Maybe you had, you know, your grandfather, or your father. If if you had a relationship like that, where you really respected him, you didn't want to tick him off. But he was fair. But he was firm. Well, and he would always tell you the truth. Listen to David here, and when he finishes up Psalm one forty two, he asks the Lord. He says, "Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low." Mm -hmm. He's not coming haughty no. No. and and high and lifted up. He says, "I am brought very low." That's humble. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. There's thankfulness, right? The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. And, and 
that's the way it is. God, God wants to uh, hear us in prayer. He wants to teach us how to pray, and you need to get into the scriptures with that. In the book of Job, in chapter 42, Job prayed for his friends. That's another thing you ought to think about when you're praying. Yeah. And, and you know, just like those Marines on watch, they didn't have to load their weapons. They didn't have to fumble around with their stuff and try to get ready. They had six seconds or less. And God wants you to watch and pray and continue in prayer. And so you have to be, able, you have to be ready. Um, God's not going to answer every single prayer. You find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul the apostle, he has a thorn in the flesh. And uh, he prays for the Lord to take that away. And the Lord says that he's not going to. And so, it's you know. A picture of some of us, many Christians who have an illness. And of course, we'd like it to go away. And sometimes the Lord actually can, through an illness, work with us. Jesus said, this illness is for the glory of God. I'll be able to do something with you in that broken body I couldn't do in, in your, your healed body. I was thinking of one lady at our Bible study many, many years ago, and uh, she was older. I think she was near, you know, mid-60s at the time, and um, I was young at the time. was 39, 40, so she was older to me, and uh, but she had uh, kids and uh, grandkids and nieces and uh, nephews, and she was a little uh, disappointed that she had not you know, been able to lead a number of her family to the Lord. And she was saying, I just wish that I could have something, you know, a testimony that would be strong that I could use for the Lord. And two weeks later, she was diagnosed with a tumor the size of a small football in her abdomen. Now, it's interesting, that illness was for the glory of God. I ended up being one of the doctors taking care of her. And during that time, and the Lord was very good, and, and over time, we were able to remove the tumor, and it turned out it was not malignant, and she lived. But but during the few-week period with that illness, everybody was visiting her. And when she was speaking about how much she loved the Lord, I mean, he was able to turn that entire illness to his glory. And members of the family got saved, and that testimony went forward. Amen. So that's a time I'm not, I'm not going to remove it right now. I'm going to use this. How about Jesus? Yeah. No, no one is going to cross it. But thou, you know, if take this from me. Yeah. But thy will Amen. be done, Lord. Amen. And and I I just I just think that that we need to when we pray and especially now when we see these things that are unsettling to us even though we we read our scripture and we know it it's in us we, we, the flesh is weak oh gosh, and I yeah. think I think when, when when we're unsettled I think we need to take that to the Lord say Lord I might you know my soul is is low it's sorrowful what about my country I mean Thy will be done but you know. Give me understanding. Give me wisdom. Yeah. Keep me take from it, evil. Take it to the Lord. If, if times are unsettling, and they are, is there a better time to get on your knees? Yeah. Is there a better time to be reading your Bible, to read a King James Bible? Is there a better time? Have you ever seen darker days? Yeah. I it, mean, in Daniel's time, there's, there's something that happened back in the Old Testament, yeah. Daniel's time, where they were trying to find something against him, and they knew that he prayed regularly. And they convinced yep. the king in Daniel chapter 6. <laughs> yeah. um, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 5, these men said, uh, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. He's real faithful to that. He's faithful to his God. <laughs> yeah. And so in these dark times, you know, we ought to be faithful to our God, just like Daniel was faithful. And so what happened in verse 6 of Daniel 6, it says, Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said, Un thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, captains, they've consulted together to establish a royal statute. Make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Remember that about Daniel and the li right. lion's den? Verse 8, now, O king, establish the decree. Sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not, just like God's holy Bible. When King Darius signed the writing and the decree, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, 
There you go. He knew the writing was signed. Okay, it's a new law. They just it's a passed new law. it. What they am just I going to do? They this new law. It's, and it, the, it, it's, it's against God's word. Now yep. am I going to follow that, or am I going to stick with God's word? And what does Daniel do? With faithfulness, he sa- it's, the Bible says, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He didn't change at all. Then these men assembled, and they found <laughs> Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Yeah. And then, you know, then they uh, charged him and threw him yeah. in the den yeah. of lions, there's, and God saved him. Yeah, there's a new law. Okay, we don't want you to go to church anymore. Hmm. We want you to stay home. Hmm. Okay, but God said we're supposed to assemble, especially as we see the, the day of the Lord approaching. We're not to forsake the assembling. Amen. And now what do we do? Do we follow man's law? Or God's law. Well, the higher law at that time is God's law. Amen. You remember what we did here? We never closed. We never. We stayed we never open every and we, Wednesday and, we, and every and we Sunday. Prayed and we prayed and and yeah. uh, um, <laughs> it was a blessing because our 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 congregation, if you will, has grown with some wonderful Absolutely. wonderful souls Amen. because because of it. Um, and and the Lord protected us. Of course, the Lord protected us. I mean, even even the authorities were kind. To the us. lions came in. They came in and, and they left the same day. And that in. was it. <laughs> they looked. They looked at us and they go, "Come on, we got we got big a we got big yeah, a and they left. And, you know, the, then we got the these police people and everybody all came and these, left. These yeah. people aren't hurting anybody. And it, common sense prevailed. Amen. Yes, common sense prevailed. And um, and but that was the Lord. It was Amen. the Lord. That was, was the Lord. That was and, that was, and, that and was it was the, the right thing to do. It was the faithful thing to do. And so if somebody out there is frustrated and you haven't been to church in a while and you don't know what to do, why don't you come here? Why don't you consider, you know, you can check us out on YouTube. You can check out the website. What is it? Graceandtruthchurch.org. And, mm-hmm. right? and, and it's spelt out A-N-D. Yeah. yeah. You know? So I mean, and God's been good to us, Western New York. There's a lot of good churches. You're in Hamburg. Amen. There's a uh, Old time Baptist church. You're in Cheektowaga. There's the Bible believers on French Road. You're in Lancaster. There's a Lancaster uh, Bible Baptist church right across from the high school. Uh, there's a Lockport church for those of you in La- uh, Tonawanda. The church. North Tonawanda is a Lighthouse Baptist uh, church. Lighthouse Baptist church. church. Great. Amen. I mean, there are good and churches. Good God's got places for Bible you. Bible believing yeah. churches. They're not mega churches. You know, they know your name. Faithful assemblies. Faithful assemblies supporting each other. Um, it's just. It, you know, it's there, and, and it's an act of wisdom in God's eyes if you make an attempt, if you make a call, yeah. if you open the book, Amen. if you give it a try, if you hit your knees. That's an act of wisdom in God's eyes. Amen. You want to impress your father. It's very important. You know, in my life, I've been fortunate to, to know, you know, not a lot, but a few very wise um, men when I was younger. And, um, and even, in, even growing up in New York, they weren't educated and whatnot, but boy, they had a, a world of common sense and they had a way of calming you down. Absolutely. When you thought that the, that it just can't get any worse than this, right? Whether you're young and you, you're suffering from a breakup, you know, or you're starting out in business and you're putting payroll on your credit card. I mean, they had, a, they had that. That that stableness, way, that stableness, because they watched. They were wise. Now, you know, again, they uh, there were a long time ago. It was before I was saved. Yeah. Maybe they were Christians. I don't know, but they never witnessed to me. But I'm just saying. But that's your that's your God to the ultimate. Well, he's the a rock. Ul- he is rock. a rock. The ult- Jeremiah the says the same thing you did. Uh, Jeremiah was running through the streets in the fifth chapter. And he said, I'm looking around. There's a bunch of poor, foolish people who don't know the way of the Lord nor the judgment of God. I'm going to get to the great men and speak to them because they've known the way of the Lord and the judgment of God. Right. And that's right. that's what we and, need. And how, and how about a how Good about pastors a, can help you know, me with that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny because how about, a, uh, you know, it's funny, Mike, because when I first met you as almost 20 years ago, I guess we were not young men, but. But now, but but we used to talk about the. I think you at one time those older Christian men, the older Christian or, or, men. The, or the good Christian women like yep, Julia. That's right, yeah, yeah, Julia, yep. and uh, and and how when you talk with them, they they, they got it. They they got it. You sure. wanted what they had. They I mean, lead by example. Yeah, they do. I mean, they didn't they didn't make a big show of things. They were just quiet. They went about Meek. things. They just yep. they they were just so so. 
I was saying, I don't know any now, but I guess we're those guys. I, I hope we're those guys for other people. <laughs> we're turning you into know? them now. But, you yeah. know, we're turning <laughs> into them. But, I mean, somebody, some of these men were, you know, 70s, 80s. They're not with us anymore. But they, um, but man, they just had a, I'll be a 70 peace soon. Yeah. and a will. Yeah. You know, it just, it just, they knew the Lord. Amen. And you know what? I'm just thinking out loud. The Lord knew them. Yeah. When you, you know, I just, that just came up with that. Sure. You know what was so special about them? They knew the Lord. The Lord knew them. Yes. And they, and they took joy in that. And, and you, could, you, could, you could see it in them. You could see it in their countenance and the way that they carried themselves yes. in their walk. Yes. And, you know, if you watch and you pray and you don't fall asleep and you don't fall into temptation, then you can have that kind of walk and be an Amen. example unto others. Yes. And if, if we got just a couple of minutes, sure. I want to read Go something ahead, from Come Isaiah. On, in Go Isaiah ahead. chapter 1, it talks about someone being unclean yeah. and praying. And I'd like to read this. This is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. And when you spread forth your hands, like right. in a prayer, right? When you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. Verse 16, which is always the number of love. God says, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil from your doings before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widows. And then here he says, here's the invitation. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Yeah. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Right? So God wants you to come. He, he wants you to, uh, you know, through prayer, not, not before men. He doesn't want you to confess your sins before men. He wants you to confess your sins to him. He wants you to come clean before him. And, you know, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. I Amen. just love, Jesus, I just love that, that us reason together. That night, uh, Jesus took the disciples with him to prayer. And, and he wants you to be a disciple and to follow him to the place of prayer where you too can watch and pray. And the next day he did all the work for you on Calvary's cross to pay for those sins, to take those crimson sins and make them white as snow. And you can be his disciple and you can be his brother and sister in the Lord by having faith in him. That's the good news Amen. that we're learning. And thanks for joining us on the What is Truth program. Next week we might delve a little to that uh, concept, the devil and the mystery of iniquity and the things that he's doing down here to confuse people. Next week, 730, What is Truth right here on WECK. Until then, do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is truth. Amen. Amen.